Okay, here's a good question that came in from someone anonymous because they let their HPLC run dry and they're wondering what to do. So what do you do if your HPLC runs dry? First statement, um, don't let it run dry. Um, here's a trick. You could, set, uh, you could set a minimum pressure on your HPLC pump and you'd basically tell it, look, if you're running at 2000 PSI all the time or you're running at 100 bar all the time, um, if it ever gets down to five bar, shut down. So basically what that means is if it starts pumping air, shut the system down. Um, so that's one piece of advice is to not uh, let air bubbles get into your system. So let's deal with the fact that it's already happened. Um, my first statement, don't freak out. Don't worry about it. It's not nearly as bad as you think. I know people are out there saying, air in your column, your column's destroyed, you just threw away a $500 column. Nonsense, your column's fine. Um, the instrument's fine. Now, I don't want you to run your instrument for long periods of time, but it's dry because you're, you're pissed in on the pump seal, eventually it wears out and it, whatever. So, but uh, that, that's, a, that's an issue that would be a, a long-term issue. So short-term issue, let's just get uh, liquid back into your instrument. Um, I uh, would start with 100% methanol or 100% acetonitrile. First thing, let's pump all the uh, air out of the line. So open the purge valve, let's just get the uh, air bubbles gone. Uh, at that point, you could then switch to liquid and start pumping liquid through. So once you pressurize the column, the gases will dissolve into the liquid, so they'll disappear. You'll see bubbles coming out for a little bit, but once you hydrate that column again, uh, the column's gonna be fine. I know people say that if a column dries out, that the column's ruined. Um, I don't believe that's true. And in fact, I have data to say it's not true because we actually lost a column for three years underneath a GC and we found it three years later, put it back on, it pumped bubbles for a couple of minutes and from that point on it was perfectly fine. So my theory is that we don't damage columns even when they dry out. It's an old fashioned thing. I think it came from the days when we were using irregular packing material. We don't use irregular anymore, we use spherical. So my philosophy, my theory is I don't think columns can, when they dry out, I don't think they crack, which is what they used to do in the olden days. So if your column dries out, don't worry about it. Uh, don't tell anybody, just put liquid through it and make an injection, run a, a standard and make sure the numbers look good after that. But my gut says for most columns, non-issue. Now, let me give you a little, uh, a little uh, caveat to that. Reverse phase columns, normal phase columns, silica based columns, non-issue, you cannot hurt them. You cannot damage them, you cannot overpressurize them, they're all fine. The non-silica based columns, we do worry about. So if you're doing size exclusion chromatography, gel filtration, especially for proteins. If you dry out that column, yeah, time to buy a new column. Those are very fragile columns. Um, uh, size exclusion in the gel permeation world uh, as well. Those are fragile columns. You don't want those to dry out. Ion chromatography, I'd get nervous if the column dried out. Nervous, but I wouldn't freak out. But in the, uh, in the other ones, the non-silica based um, size exclusion columns, yeah, I might, I might freak out with that one uh, because those are fragile columns. But short of that, most columns out there will not be damaged by letting air run through them. Don't make a practice of it, um, but, uh, but you, you've done no damage. Your, your instrument's fine.